tribulations. Shout on what the devil has stolen from you. That's when you get down and you just say it like this. And you start to praise God. Not because he did it, but because he's going to do it. That's when you start believing in your heart that God is God. Because you know that you know that you know. before you were conceived he saw you while we were on earth and even when we take our last breath God will still be God he will still be here for that we worship him for that we ought to praise him and lift our hands and acknowledge who he is you are here moving in the midst I worship Young lady, Tasha, okay, I need you to come to the front right here. The reason I'm asking you to come to the front is because so you don't know why you came today, 
But today is going to be the best day of your life because God is getting ready to change your life around. He's getting ready to do something special. And all I want you to do is just come here and we're going to speak over your life. Because God is getting ready to do something for you. I want you to stand right here. No, sit down. I want you to stand right here. Just stand right here. God is getting ready to do something for you. Look, I want you to look at me. Okay? The things that you used to do, you're not going to do them no more. The places that you used to go, you're not going to go. You know why? Because God is getting ready to change your life and take you to another direction. Amen. There was, you had a dream. Something that you want to do in life. I want to be a psychiatrist in my own practice at home. Okay, y'all hear that? She want to be a, a what? Now, now, you didn't know that was Marcella's mom field, did you? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. But you know what? No, but see, God spoke to me, and, 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 and he's, getting ready, he's getting ready to do something different in your life. But all he wants you to do is just yield to him. He wants you to yield to him. Are the friends that you have now, you're going to have to say bye-bye to them. Because you're going to have to say bye-bye to them because they are in the way of your goals. I want you to look at, I'm telling you, this is what the Lord is speaking to me. They are standing in the way of your goals. The Lord told me, you're a brilliant woman. I was sitting at the Lord's book and said, she's a brilliant woman. But she had to change her company. And that's why he brought you here today. What we're going to do, we're just going to speak life over you. Is that okay? We're going to speak life over you. And from one young person to another. I'm going to let Amanda speak life into you, and then I'm going to let her mom pray over you, okay? And your life is not going to be the same, and you're going to reach those goals, and we're going to put your name on our prayer list, and we're going to keep it there. And whatever it is that you need to obtain those goals, we're going to walk with you. Are you listening to me? Whatever you need, we're going to walk with you because God said greatness is in you. But you have to let the past go. I see you driving big cars. I see you. Look at me. I'm not, I'm not dreaming. I'm, I'm telling you. I see you in a big, fine home. No, no. No man is not going to buy a house for you. You're going to buy your own home. You're going to buy your own home. You hear what I'm saying? Do you want God to do those things for you? But not only that, God is going to save your soul. He's going to fill you with his Holy Ghost. And you're going to live with him forever when your time comes. But it's not no, your time coming ain't no time soon. Will you receive that today? Speak life into her. Speak life in every part of her life. And Jackie, I want you, while she's speaking life, Jackie, I want you to come and touch with her. And I want you to agree in Jesus' name. All right. There's going to be times in life where you have to play the waiting game. And there's going to be times in life where you're going to feel like God is not there. There's going to be a time in life where you're going to feel absolutely abandoned. But the thing that I want you to know is that he's still there. He will always be there. What God does in your life, God puts you where he needs you to be. God places you in situations. There's going to be times where the devil is going to try you. The devil is going to tempt you. The devil is going to test you. But God is not going to put anything on you that he can't bear. You won't be able to bear it, but he can bear it. He can handle whatever situation is placed in front of you, whatever challenge, whatever obstacle that God has allowed for you to face. It's because he told the devil he could do it. There's going to be times in your life, young lady, you're going to question your beliefs. You're going to question every single thing that God has allowed to happen to you. But in those times, cling to him. Protect your mind. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. If you don't keep yourself busy, if you don't keep yourself productive, then the devil will use people that you know to get to you. He's going to use what's familiar to you to get to you. He's going to use what's comfortable. Like my dad said, the things you used to do, you won't do anymore. But when you're in a place 
of isolation, that's when the devil tempts you to go where you used to go. He's going to tempt you to talk to people that you shouldn't talk to and to walk down streets you shouldn't walk down. In those moments, you have to do what Marcellus did. You have to cry out to God. God, I need your help. God, I feel alone. God, I feel isolated. God, I don't really believe. Look at me. Look at me. God, I don't believe in you. God, I need to know you're real. God, show me your face. If you test him, he's going to show up. If you say, God, I need you to prove to me that you are real. Look at me, Ty. If you say, God, I don't believe in you. I need you to show up right now and tell me that you're real. Tell me that you really divided that Red Sea. Tell me that you really brought Daniel out of the lion's den. Tell me that you really gave Abraham a ram in the bush when you told him to sacrifice your son. And I promise you, Ty, I promise you God is going to show up. Because at a moment when my husband and I could not protect our son, it was God who showed up. It wasn't us who came running to his aid. It was God who was already there that kept that baby. It was God who did that. And I was reminded that Knox doesn't belong to Kevin and I. Knox belongs to God. You don't belong to your parents. You belong to God. Your life belongs to God. Your gift, your gift. Do you hear me? Your gift belongs to God. So you want to be a psychiatrist. You're supposed to save people's minds. You have to believe in the ultimate healer. If you're going to heal people's minds, because you didn't say psychology, you said psychiatry. You're going to be prescribing medication for bipolar disorder, PTSD, schizophrenia. If you want to heal people's minds, you have to believe in the mind regulator. You have to believe in the person that created life. You have to believe that God is God. The only thing that God is telling me to tell you is to believe in him. You don't believe right now. You don't believe God is real. You don't believe there is a God in heaven, but believe in him, Ty. Believe. Believe in your heart. This message today is for you. I had no idea. I'm going to let her pray for you because I got a word for you. It's called faith in it or faking it. Believe. He is real. God is real. His Hebrew name is Yahweh. Say Yahweh. Yahweh. Say Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh is real. But we come to you with one of your children. You brought her here today so that she could be reintroduced to you. You love her. You know her. You were there with her before she took her first breath. You know her struggles. You know her heartache. You know her existence. You know what her needs are. And more than anything else, you have chosen this time in her life for her to be reintroduced to you. I marvel, God, and how awesome you are, how amazing you are, how loving you are, how particular you are how you look down upon us and you take care of the most smallest detail you recognize the needs of Tay, and so God I offer her up to you I ask you God to cover her with your love cover her with your saving grace cover her with your protection Cover her with your ability to keep her from all hurt and harm and danger, seen and unseen, intentional or unintentional. Cover her, God. Keep her when she can't keep herself. Keep her when she doesn't even know that she needs to be kept. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. 
Oh, to be kept by Jesus. Oh, to be held by Jesus. Oh, to be loved by Jesus. God, I ask you to touch upon Tatar. Let her know when she's away from here that you are a way maker. You are a provider. You are the, in the middle of her life. During any storm, keep her, God, protect her. And we ask you to bless her today that she will enjoy this service and that she will grow today in ways that she doesn't know or understand. But always keep her. In Yahashua's name, I always pray. Amen. loving father i am so thankful that you have showed up in this place today father god i ask that you use me father to speak to the hearts of your people replace me with you oh god take everything out of me god and you give me the words to speak directly to your people open up the hearts so they may be, be able to receive your word in jesus name we pray in love amen So today's scripture reading is coming from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 4, and then verses 9 through 11. And I promise I won't be before you long. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God. But their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they do not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. And then moving down to verses 9 through 11. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved as scripture says anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame can we say amen for the word of god <clears throat> today's sermon title i'm excited is called faith in it with an N, but we're going to put an apostrophe, no G. Faith in it or faking it? Which one are you doing? Are you really believing or are you pretending to believe? So, as we all know, in the book of Romans, I'm going to take this down. The book of Romans is written by the apostle Paul. And Paul, poor Paul, Paul is forever writing a letter to the church of Corinth. He's forever writing letters and trying to use the life of the Israelites so that we do not make the same mistakes that the Israelites made. And in this particular chapter of Romans, Paul is explaining how the Israelites missed salvation. How was it that God ordained them to be the chosen people, but yet they missed salvation? The word zealous means passion or committed or dedicated. So if we replace that word within the scripture, it says, for I can testify about them that they are passionate and committed and dedicated for God, but their zeal is not based in knowledge. So although the Israelites believed in God and they were passionate about God and they were passionate about their favor. The Israelites, anybody who knows the story, they were forever telling the Gentiles what? You are not the chosen. We are the chosen. They always frowned their noses and turned their faces up at other people. 
And sometimes as believers, we have a habit without knowing of looking at somebody else whose situation might be a little different than ours, and we might make a face. We might frown our faces up, or we might judge them without meaning to. And we ought to be careful with that, because it is not through our own righteousness that we're saved, but it is by faith. Now, the Bible tells us to believe and believing simply means that the word of God is in your heart. The foundation of faith is to have Christ in your heart. Repeat that after me. The foundation of faith, foundation is, of faith. is to have Christ, to have Christ in, your heart. in your heart. There's a reason I'm telling you this. I'm excited. So it is also impossible for us to be righteous by our own works, which would be obedience. That is why the foundation of faith is not obedience. That is why righteousness is not the foundation of faith. But the foundation of faith is having Christ in your heart. Christ was both obedient and righteous. So where we lack, Christ does not. Which is why it is important that we carry him in our lives. Verse 4 then goes on to read, Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. What does it mean to believe? The word believe has two meanings. The first meaning, believing means to accept something as true. So, for example, if we're going to use the first definition, definition of believing, that means we are accepting something as true. I believe Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him for the dead. That is what I believe in my heart. I know and I have accepted this as truth. The second definition of believing means to hold something as an opinion or to suppose. So that would be, I believe Jesus is the son of God and God raised him from the dead. Do you notice the difference in how I said the two? One, there was conviction. The other, there was doubt. So there's two different ways to believe. One is a declarative statement ending with a period. I believe Jesus is the son of God and God raised him from the dead. That ends in a period. The other is an interrogatory statement ending with a question mark and leaving room for explanation or for an answer. Are you faith in it or are you faking it? Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Now, I love the fact that my young brother is crying right now because the Bible tells us to be like little children. And I love that that's right here in this scripture. God, Jesus told us, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, what is it about a child, childlike faith, that is special? What is it? I'm glad you asked. Remember when you guys were children, when we were children, right? We believed Pretty much everything somebody told us. If an adult told you something, you believed it for the most part. I'm going to use the example of Santa Claus, right? Now, my father didn't allow me to believe in Santa Claus for his own selfish reasons. Aside from biblical reasons, he wanted me to know that he was spending his money on my gifts. It wasn't an obese white man chimney or shimmying, shimmying down our chimney giving me gifts. My dad wanted to take all the credit so there was no Santa Claus in my house, but we're going to use that as an example. Children don't question how Santa is able to visit every person's house in 24 hours, right? With reindeer. Now, as an adult, we look back on that. Maybe if you believed in Santa, you might have a few questions. One question I wrote down is, why is Santa using reindeer? He might want to use something a little faster. I've seen deer. They don't move too fast. And they get very startled with bright lights. So why would this person use or, or choose to use a reindeer to bring gifts? He might want to use technology since he has access to all the gifts. He might want to use a jet or maybe a teleport machine, something that's going to move him a little faster than reindeer. That would be my first question as an adult. The second thing I would say is how is Santa getting these gifts, right? Santa doesn't work. He doesn't have a job. 
Does Santa have a black card or Santa a thief? How is Santa able to afford or to, how is he getting these gifts for these children? That would be my second question. Now, my third question, what about the children who didn't live in a home with a chimney? Did Santa use a credit card to pop the lock? Was Santa from the hood? Was Santa popping locks with the credit cards and walking through the front door? I mean, how is it that he, this, this strange man was going unseen? Now, me, if I hear anything creeping in my house, right, where I live, what you going to do? Get up and look. So how is that this obese man is able to walk around people's houses, come down the chimney, right? How is he able to do these things? How? So many questions we have as adults that interfere with us believing in Santa and putting aside the fact, like I said, it's a pagan holiday and maybe we don't celebrate it, right? But there's so many things. There's so many questions that we ask. We ask for so many different things, right? We, we just, we, we let our minds wander too much. We overanalyze, which causes us not to believe. Are you following me? So here's the deal. If only we believed in God the way that children believed in Santa, right? Children write, they write their little lists to Santa Claus every Christmas, right? They write a list and they really believe that if they're good enough, Santa's going to come and bring them a gift. Perhaps if we practice childlike faith, we would believe that God would be enough and that we would write our list of needs down one time. And we would talk to God in prayer one time. Now it's okay to pray about things. But have you ever found yourself asking God for the same things over and over and over and over and over? God ain't deaf. He doesn't need a reminder. God knows what we need. So if we actually trusted God the way children trusted in Santa, we would be okay. But that's why God says he needs us to be childlike. What if we actually said things that we needed in prayer, and instead of complaining, we just sat and waited in anticipation, knowing that God was going to show up. What if we did that? What if we actually believed that God would the bills? It ain't cute when your car cut off. It ain't cute when your health is declining. That is not going to work. You faking it is no longer going to work when you're in your valley. You got to have faith. You got to truly believe. People of God, where is your faith? Are you faith in it or are you faking it? We have to are stop you? caring about what people think about us. We care more about our peers than we do about God. We care more about what people in the world think about us than we do people in the church. We care more about how we look on social media. We call it stunting nowadays. We like to stunt for the gram. We like to stunt for Facebook. We like to stunt for Snapchat and whatever else social media app. But when are you going to stunt for Jesus? When are you going to show people that you are a child of God? When are you going to walk like you are a child of God? When are you going to get out here and speak life over dead situations? When is it that you're going to allow God to use you? When? Are we going to stop faking it? And when are we going to start faithing it? There comes a point in time where we have to put the word of God in our hearts and we have to walk boldly. You can't have God inside of you and yet you're living an unfulfilled life. That's an oxymoron. You can't have God in your heart but have doubts in your mind. That's an oxymoron. You got to get back to a place where you believe God's word is all that you need and that you are trusting and believing in him to supply all of your needs. You have to believe and accept God's word as fact and not opinion. So the next time the devil attacks your mind, I want you to say, I'm faith in it. Can you say that? Say, I'm faith in it. So the next time the devil attacks your body, what you going to say? The next time the devil attacks your job, what you going to say? The next time the devil attacks your family, what you going to say? The next time the devil attacks my finances, I'm faith in it. The next time the devil attacks my dream, I'm faith in it. The next time the devil attacks my relationship, I'm faith in it. The next time the devil attacks my children, I'm faith in it. 
Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Are you faking it or are you faithing it? And I want you to repeat after me and I'm going to take my seat. I know that God is the Alpha and Omega. Nothing begins and ends without him. I know that Jesus is Lord of everything in my life. That includes my deepest secrets and my greatest accomplishments. There is nothing too hard for God. I believe and I profess that Jesus is Lord of all. Now, if you truly believe those words, put your hands together and give God a mighty praise. If you truly believe those words, I want you to truly lift up your voices right now. You don't need music to praise God. Lift up your voice right now and tell God that you truly believe. And I and praise for all the things. Stand up on your feet and give God some praise for all the things. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, hey. For all the things. For all the things. You know it. He's done. For all the things. Sing it. He's done. For all the things. He's done. To God. To God. is going to do it. That's when you stop believing in your heart that God is God. Because you know that you know that you know that he's God. Hallelujah. Da 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 da